Hello and welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Glad that you could join us once again. My guests today are radiation oncologist Dr. Jay Lee, and he's joined by uh, Carolyn Graham. She's a, a breast cancer survivor. And I'll uh, let Dr. Lee and uh, Carolyn introduce uh, themselves uh, more uh, in depth, and we'll jump right into our discussion this morning, a brief discussion about proton therapy and the uh, patient experience with that therapy. Welcome to the program, both Dr. J. Lee and Carolyn Graham. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Neil. Uh, Dr. Lee, um, I did mention that you're a radiation oncologist. A bit of background about yourself. Uh, I know that you're um, uh, treating patients at Procure Proton Therapy. Where is that located? Yeah, so um, Procure Proton Therapy Center is located in Somerset, New Jersey. Um, I treat patients there and also through uh, Princeton Radiation Oncology uh, through a number of practices throughout New Jersey. Was that your first love uh, going into medicine was uh, uh, oncology? <laughs> Uh, so during medical school, I was uh, very interested in any type of um, uh, oncology or cancer-related field. And uh, once I did my rotation through radiation oncology, I, I really did fall in love with it. Um, it really just blends a lot of advanced technology, um, a lot of time talking with patients, getting to know them, uh, developing long-term relationships. Um, so it was just a, it was a perfect fit. Now, Carolyn, I understand you were diagnosed with um, breast cancer last year. Uh, give us a bit of background about yourself and talk briefly about your diagnosis. Sure. Um, so it's uh, it's actually coming up on uh, almost a year. It'll be a year on Tuesday that um, I was diagnosed. Um, I actually just did a self-check and, and found a lump. And um, because I'm under 40, I had never had a mammogram done and everything. And so, you know, it was one of those things where everyone kept reassuring me that it wasn't going to be cancer because I was young. And um, unfortunately, that wasn't the case. So I was diagnosed um, stage two um, in the list, um, uh, metastasis to the lymph nodes. And um, to, uh, I was diagnosed as um, ER positive, HER2 negative. Was your first uh, option proton therapy? Um, proton therapy was suggested by my doctor um, because it was the left side, because I was young. Um, standard radiation uh, put the, uh, a breast cancer patient, especially on the left side that's being treated, more at risk for heart issues uh, down the road, whereas with it was explained to me that with proton therapy, those um, risks would be uh, not as severe and would be minimal. Dr. Lee, proton therapy, she's uh, talking about it not being um, uh, as, I guess, destructive as uh, radiation therapy. Right. What is proton therapy? How does it work? And why, uh, other than what um, Carolyn has, has described, what made her a better candidate and what circumstances could have uh, existed yeah. to make her not a candidate? Yeah, that's those are good questions. So, uh, proton therapy is a form of radiation, but it uses high energy particles instead of conventional x rays. Mm -hmm. The issue with x rays is that they tend to go through and through the body, and during that entire path, it deposits a uh, radiation dose. Mm -hmm. So, we're able to sculpt the dose to the tumor, the tumor bed um, with conventional radiation, but it often uh, exposes the surrounding normal structures to low to moderate doses. Um, proton therapy has a unique property that allows the dose to be deposited exactly where we want it to go and leave no exit dose. So patients who have left-sided breast cancers like Carolyn, the biggest benefits we believe are to uh, spare organs like the heart and I'm talking about the, the upper torso. Um, what about other types of, I mean, um, neck, head, maybe in a hand, is there other types of cancers that don't work at all with proton therapy or are they not, ne not needed? Well, uh, proton therapy can be uh, considered for almost any type of cancer. Um, it really just depends on the unique uh, patient anatomy and um, the organs that are nearby that, that we worry about. 
So sometimes uh, when we when we treat um, cancers in the extremities, where um, you know there may not be a significant amount of sparing of um, other organs, then sometimes uh, we think that the benefit of protons may be a little bit more uh, borderline. But even in those cases, um, the total dose that delivered to the normal surrounding tissues is always lower with protons, and uh, that can have uh, significant benefits, particularly in patients who are younger, who we expect to live many more decades, uh, like Carolyn. Carolyn, being a, as young uh, as you were when you were diagnosed, had you had any experience with uh, cancer, breast cancer specifically, cancer in general? Did you know of anyone who had been through traditional radiation or chemotherapy? Did you have anything to compare it with? Or was this therapy, did it all make sense to you immediately? When I was diagnosed, the, the only people I knew who had um, were breast cancer were people that were significantly older um, than I was. So I didn't know anyone my age. Um, so people, you know, women more in their 50s or 60s um, that had uh, gone through treatment. So um, as far as proton therapy, it was something that really wasn't even on my radar um, until I was diagnosed. And then um, I, you know, it was just recommended because of my situation that this was the um, the best option for me. Have you, um, have you discussed, I mean, like you're doing with us today, talk to other people about the benefits of, of proton therapy as they relate to your, your personal uh, experience? Absolutely. Um, I, can't rave, you know, enough about it. Um, I consider myself uh, very, very fortunate. And just, um, I talk to people all the time, just um, not just, you know, I mean, the proton therapy, yes, but Procure itself as a whole too, it was just a, an amazing facility. And um, and Dr. Lee and, and all the nurses and, and everyone there as well. I mean, I just was very fortunate in that, uh, in, in my treatment, uh, it, that it just, it worked out the way that it did. Um, I have a, a colleague of mine whose sister was just recently diagnosed with breast cancer. And I was like, I know the perfect place for you to go when it comes to radiation. And, um, you know, and I've given, you know, all the information and everything. And um, she actually doesn't even live too far from Somerset. So it's, uh, so we'll, we'll see, but it's, um it, it is definitely something that I, I talk about all the time. Dr. Lee, obviously um, there's aftercare involved. Talk about the aftercare provided uh, by Procure and talk about the significant differences between traditional radiation therapy, aftercare, and proton therapy. Oh, sure. So um, that's right. The, the proton therapy is really just the beginning um, of a long-term relationship. Uh, because after treatment, the survivorship is really uh, what the majority of patients spend their lives in. Um, this typically requires regular follow-up visits uh, for clinical exams, um, for other types of, of cancer. Sometimes we, we use scans. Uh, sometimes we rely more on physical exam. Um, and we coordinate this follow-up uh, with not just ourselves, the radiation oncologist, but all of the other physicians on the multidisciplinary team, like the surgeons, the medical oncologists, um, you know, in Carolyn's case particularly, um, she, she's currently um, in the endocrine therapy portion of treatment. And so she'll be following very closely with us, with her medical oncologist. Um, the follow-up between proton therapy and conventional radiation is not all that different. Um, because proton therapy really is a type of radiation, um, one that's uh, more advanced and allows us to spare the normal tissues uh, better. Mm -hmm. But um, in terms of what we wanted to do, in terms of treating the cancer while minimizing side effects, um, it doesn't it doesn't change the the follow up. Uh, Carolyn, did you take advantage of any of the other services uh, that Procure Proton Therapy there uh, offers um, as far as uh, maybe finding a room for people who wanted to come visit you during your treatment, even if that if you had to stay there? Uh, let's talk about some of the other uh, services offered. Um, sure. Um, fortunately for me, uh, I lived only about an hour away, so I didn't need to um, 
you know, seek out like uh, a long-term place to stay. But during my treatment, I did um, meet people who came from all over, um, from California, from Texas, from, I know there was even um, someone who came from Israel. Um, and so I know that there were plenty of uh, services they had, um, they would have like dinner meet and greets or a local restaurant. They'd invite people out to um, just to have dinner and socialize together. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when we finished treatment, um, they had a nice little ceremony where we invited our family and they provided lunch and they did uh, like presentations and they give us all coins um, that represent uh, who we are, you know, and our strength. And, and it's just, it's a very, very uh, family oriented um, facility that focuses on the whole person and not just um, the, a, a patient. And, and Dr. Lee, where can our listeners go and get some more information about um, your practice there, Procure Proton Therapy Center in uh, Somerset, New Jersey? Uh, sure. So um, there's a, a www.procure.com. Uh, backslash New Jersey Explore, um, you know, or just, just look it up on Google. It'll it'll show up as as one of the first results. Well, I thank you both, uh, Dr. Lee and uh, Carolyn Graham, for joining us on the program. It's been a pleasure speaking with both of you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you that. so much. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, listen in and download at SoundCloud, and be sure and visit our affiliates page at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. Thank you for listening to Health Professional Radio. We're very proud to be an independent broadcaster providing our content free of charge to you, the listener. One of the ways that we're able to remain free and independent is by having people like you become patrons. You can support Health Professional Radio simply by visiting hpr.fm and clicking the button that says Become a Patron. Your patronage of even just $1 a month lets us know that you're there, which in turn makes us more valuable to advertisers. And, of course, if you're able to afford more, then we would certainly appreciate the support. My name is Toby Longhurst from Health Professional Radio. Please visit hpr.fm, click the Become a Patron button, and support us if you can.